Okay, um, the final item of business is members' business debate on motion 15977 in the name of Kenneth Gibson on protecting children and young people from the marketing of health harming products. Uh, and this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. So may I ask those who wish to participate to press the request to speak buttons. And as a point of information, because we're continuing uh, the stage three debate tomorrow, the clocks are not being reset. So I shall try and be as accurate as possible in telling you uh, when your time is up. But if everyone would have due regard to that, especially some people <laughs> and I call on Kenneth Gibson to open the debate for around seven minutes, please, Mr Gibson. Thank you, presiding officer, and I warmly thank colleagues who signed my motion and facilitated today's debate on what I believe to be an important public health issue. And even more, I want to thank those intrepid souls who have stayed behind to hear the opening speech and indeed those who are going to participate in this evening's debate. It's been a long day for us all. I thank members of the Cross-Party Group on Scotland's Health 2021 and Beyond, of which I am co-convener, uh, many of whom of the members are active campaigners against irresponsible marketing of health-harming products. Specifically, I am also grateful to Alcohol Focus Scotland and Advertising Standards Agency for their briefings. It is undeniable that marketing drives consumption of health-harming products, including alcohol. There are, on average, 22 alcohol-specific deaths every week in Scotland and 683 hospital admissions. Those are not just statistics, they are people, families and communities deeply affected by alcohol harm. The first UK-wide study examining awareness of alcohol marketing and ownership of alcohol branded merchandise in young people was coordinated by researchers from the Institute of Social Marketing at the University of Stirling and Cancer Research UK. It found that young people above and below the legal purchasing age are conscious of alcohol marketing and almost one in five own alcohol branded merchandise. At least half of 11 to 19 year olds surveyed saw the equivalent of one alcohol advert every day, while a third of under 18 saw two a day. On the whole, young people easily recall, recalled around a third of the alcohol brands in the survey. These findings are supported by a study conducted in 2015 by Alcohol Focus Scotland, Alcohol Concern, Balance North East and Drinkwise, which found that 10 and 11 year olds were more familiar with certain beers than leading brands of biscuits, crisps and ice cream. Of course, awareness is not an issue in and of itself, but when Dr Nathan Critchlow presented the UK-wide survey to the cross-party group on Scotland's Health, he emphasised results demonstrating that in current drinkers, alcohol marketing awareness was associated with both increased consumption and greater likelihood of higher risk consumption. Dr Critchlow's assertion is consistent with international research showing that children find alcohol marketing messages appealing and this influences their perception of alcohol. We must all be cognisant of the fact that alcohol marketing reduces the age at which young people start drinking, increases the likelihood they will drink and the amount of alcohol consumed if they already drink. One sector where alcohol marketing is particularly prominent is sport. Alcohol brands are high profile sponsors of major sporting events viewed by millions of adults and children alike. Scottish women's football is setting a sterling example in this regard by taking a strong stance against alcohol sponsorship as part of their aspiration to represent a clean sport. As SWF Chair Vivian McLaren put it, accepting alcohol and gambling sponsorship would be incompatible with our role in promoting healthy lifestyles amongst girls and women and supporting them to make positive choices. Alcohol and gambling industry sponsorship represents major funding sources for grassroots sport and is a very bold and admirable step to reject such financial backing outright. I hope to see more sporting bodies and teams following the lead of SWF and rejecting alcohol marketing. At the CPG on Scotland's Health's February meeting, attendees unanimously agreed that alcohol marketing has no place in childhood. I, heart I wholeheartedly believe that all children should have the opportunity to play, learn and grow in spaces that are healthy and safe, free from exposure to alcohol advertising and sponsorship. Television advertising remains one of the biggest sources of exposure to alcohol imagery and commercial adverts for alcohol continue to be aired before the 9pm watershed. The Advertising Standards Authority will publish research on children's exposure to alcohol uh, ads on TV later this year. However, according to the ASA's own research, in 2017, uh, children's exposure to alcohol ads relative to adults was 22%, and that figure is too high. As colleagues will know, powers over broadcast advertising are reserved to the UK Government. I therefore welcome Scottish Government assurances that they continue to urge UK counterparts to protect children and young people from exposure to alcohol, alcohol marketing on television before 9pm and in cinemas 
or devolve the powers so we can make the decision here in Scotland. Of course, we do have powers to regulate other marketing channels, including public spaces, alongside digital and online routes, which is why I welcome the commitment within the Scottish uh, Government's Alcohol Framework 2018 to consult and engage on measures to protect children and young people. Restricting school advertising is one of the World Health Organisation's three best buys, most cost-effective methods to reduce alcohol consumption and related harms across a population. These restrictions ensure that vulnerable groups such as children and young people and those recovering from alcohol dependence are specifically protected from the impact of alcohol marketing. I trust this is something the Scottish Government will consider carefully in its next steps on changing Scotland's relationship with alcohol. There are lessons we can learn from our Irish neighbours who last year signed into law the Public Health Alcohol Act 2018. This world-leading legislation prohibits the advertising of an alcohol product in or on a sports area during a sports event. It also introduces a broadcast watershed ban on TV alcohol advertising from 3 a.m. until 9 p.m. and radio programmes from midnight to 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. to midnight. Another key tenet of the new law is the introduction of a structural separation of alcohol from other products in retail outlets, as happens in many other countries too. I will watch the Act's implementation over the next three years with a view to pushing for evidence-led best practice here in Scotland. Looking more broadly at alcohol marketing, I note the calls from a number of organisations to end self-regulation in the alcohol industry, particularly a report published last year by Alcohol, alcohol Concern and Alcohol UK entitled Fit for Purpose, an analysis of the role of the Portman Group in alcohol industry self-regulation. The Portman Group is one of the key regulators of alcohol industry marketing and promotion in the UK, with a core of practice that applies to the naming, packaging, marketing and promotional activity of UK alcohol products. According to the group's website, it's currently funded by eight member companies, one of which accounts for more than half of the UK alcohol marketing. One shortcoming with the group's self-regulatory approach is its position that a drink may appeal to children if it resonates with under-18s in a way that it does not with over-18s. This narrow definition precludes taking action on drinks that appeal to the full range of consumers, including under-18s, and this places the focus of enforcement on drinks with a superficial appeal to young children likely to be less interested in alcohol as distinct from adolescents. The Portman Group and other regulatory bodies must move beyond the false assumption that underage drinkers are only attracted to childish imagery and accept that appealing to the youth market inevitably captures adolescents. Other criticisms of the self-regulatory approach include overtly subjective decision-making, despite the wide body of evidence available regarding purchasing and drinking behaviours, such as the comprehensive research by Dr Critchlow already described. I trust the Scottish Government will consider the shortcomings of self-regulation in its consultations on measures to protect children and young people from alcohol marketing and work with UK counterparts to strengthen regulation where powers are reserved. Presiding officer, the marketing of health-harming products is an issue which involves organisations ranging from the Scottish and UK governments to regulators like the ASA, Ofcom and the Portman Group, to alcohol brands, advertising agencies, sporting bodies, cultural event organisers and more. One body cannot manage the multi-channel reality of modern marketing practices alone, and therefore ensuring our children grow up in spaces free of alcohol-related marketing requires a carefully coordinated approach. Yet just because something is challenging doesn't mean we shouldn't pursue it. Just this week, we found alcohol sales in Scotland have fallen to the lowest level in 25 years, and data from NHS Scotland showed alcohol consumption dropped 3% from 2017 to 2018, demonstrating the positive impact of minimum unit pricing. Progressive action works. Let's build on the momentum from the 2018 Alcohol Framework, its commitments and the assertive rejection of health-harming sponsorship by Scottish women's football and foster an environment where children are free from the known harms of irresponsible alcohol marketing. Uh, we move to the open debate and speeches of around four minutes, please. Uh, Alison Harris, followed by Emma Harper. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. As my party's spokesperson for children and young people, I'm always pleased to be speaking on any issue that relates to the well-being of Scotland's young people. And I welcome this member's debate, which gives us the opportunity to look at the measures we can take to protect children from harmful products. Can I start by thanking the Cross Party Group on Improving Scotland's Health for the work they've done on this topic, and Kerry Gibson for bringing this to the Chamber. As we all know, marketing is one of the most powerful tools used to persuade us to make purchases and buy goods. It does affect trends and it influences buying patterns. Even walking through the front door of supermarkets or any shop, the visual tool of marketing is all around us. Children are particularly drawn to it. 
Experts have pointed out many children and young people often accept the information presented in adverts unconditionally without questioning. But parents do not need statistics to realise the significance of advertising in children's lives. We know that television, brands and commercial messages of all sorts are a large part of our children's lives from a very early age. And as children mature, they will experience intense marketing along the way. The average 8 to 13 year old child is watching around three and a half hours of internet or television a day. And it's estimated that these same children make approximately 3,000 requests for products and services that they've seen either on TV or online each year. Research has clearly indicated that alcohol advertising and marketing has a significant impact on youth decisions to drink. And advertising plays a huge role in this. This in turn can be seen to contribute greatly in creating an environment that promotes underage drinking. I read somewhere not so long ago about a study of young people who were asked to respond to alcohol advertising. The study found that underage youths were drawn to music, animal and people characters and also the humour in alcohol advertising. Ads like that were liked by youths in the same study were more likely to be illicit responses from them saying they wanted to purchase the brand and products advertised. Digital marketing has advanced beyond TV adverts too. Popular social media stars put out posts here and there telling their followers that a great time they've had using certain products. Whilst adults are perhaps minded to be cynical of their motives for this, some young people may take it at face value. A worrying thought considering the level of alcohol and tobacco that appears in social media posts. The link between advertising and youth trends is therefore evident and the ways in which young people are seeing marketing is evolving, presenting new challenges to protecting them from harmful products like alcohol. And alcohol knows no social bounds, it can affect anyone in society and that can have and will have a knock-on effect on children. Regulation on marketing should keep up with technology. But I firmly believe it's a balanced approach that we need to take. I think we need to educate children that you have to respect alcohol. And possibly we need a culture change in relation to alcohol because I'm not just convinced that banning it from sight until children turn 18 is the way to go. However, I do agree that alcohol marketing has no place in childhood, but let's remain open to combining that approach with a strong foundation based on education from an early age. Thank you. Monica Lennon, oh sorry, I forgot about Emma Harper, how could I? <laughs> Emma Harper followed by Monica Lennon. Thank you, presiding officer. I congratulate Kenneth Gibson on securing this important debate this evening and his excellent detailed opening contribution. This debate gives all of us across chamber the opportunity to discuss both the progress made in protecting our young people from exposure to the marketing of health harming products, as well as the opportunity to discuss what further steps must be taken as we move forward. I thank the organisations Alcohol Focus Scotland, Our Scotland and Obesity Action Scotland who have provided the joint briefing ahead of this debate. Presiding officer, as a former nurse and current deputy convener of the Health and Sport Committee, promoting better health for the people of Scotland is of great personal and professional interest and importance to me. Every person who loses their life or who has an adverse health experience due to inequality or overexposure to substances which are known to have a harmful impact on health is one too many. Indeed, research from the World Health Organization, Action on Obesity and the British Heart Foundation and others has conclusively shown that the more young people have exposure to harmful health substances such as alcohol, tobacco and even energy drinks, the more likely they are in later life as well as potentially in their younger years to use these products and consequently develop a range of health conditions which may have a profound effect on their health and day-to-day -day lives. This leads to significant cost to our healthcare services, therefore emphasising the absolute need to take preemptive action to address this issue. Presiding officer, I'm proud that Scotland is already leading the way across the UK on the issue of promoting better health of Scotland people. Policies which were introduced by both this and previous Scottish governments include banning tobacco advertising in 2002, banning smoking in enclosed public spaces in 2006, raising the age to buy tobacco from 16 to 18 in 2007, 
making prisons smoke-free last year, introducing rules on the supply and sale of vapour products in 2017, and the Alcohol Scotland Act 2010, which put into law a ban on multi-buy discounts such as 3 for 2 or 25% off when you buy 6. The Alcohol Minimum Unit Pricing Scotland Act, which Kenneth Gibson has mentioned also, has paved the way for the introduction of the pricing which we are already seeing looking to benefit Scotland and our people. Uh, Presiding officer, that is a broad list indeed. These are all policies which are working to aim, aim stopping overexposure to alcohol and harmful substances for children and young people. However, we do have progress to make, and despite all the welcome steps outlined above, alcohol and high-fat food brands in particular are still highly visible in our everyday lives. Whether it's adverts on TV, at the cinema, on billboards or online, in magazines, newspapers, at the shops, pubs or sponsorship of music events, it's hard to avoid them and they're not discriminating of gender or age. The alcohol and fatty sugary food industries spend hundreds of millions of pounds every year on marketing their products. Although alcohol and un unhealthy food companies claim only to advertise to adults, we know that the existing advertising codes are not adequate to properly protect children. Presiding officer, in the absence of the ability to change broadcasting laws, I'd like to encourage the Scottish Government, as I'm sure they are, to seriously consider the asks and recommendations from Scottish Health Coalition. Some of the key asks which I think merit further exploration include the prohibition of outdoor alcohol advertising, in public spaces and the restriction of alcohol advertising to factual information in adult press and cinema alcohol advertising for 18 certificate films. I also ask the Minister to continue to do all she can to put pressure on the UK Government to bring about a reform of advertising regulations to better protect our children, young people and vulnerable adults from harmful substances. In conclusion, I welcome this debate. Once again, thank Kenneth Gibson for his motion this evening and I look forward to the Minister's response. Monica Lennon, followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to Kenneth Gibson for securing what is an important debate. I feel like we have to see these things as customary, but I genuinely do um, I feel it is a very important topic, and I was um, glad to be at the cross-party group when some of this was discussed, and it was a really good meeting. I think in particular what the Scottish women's uh, national football team was doing is, is very principled, and it does send out a really positive message. I'm going to um, keep my remarks uh, mostly on the, on the alcohol aspect of this. Um, colleagues will, will be aware that I, I do talk about this a lot, but I think that there's, there's a lot of positive work happening here in Scotland, in the Scottish Parliament, with the Scottish Government, and cross-party support to really change Scotland's relationship with alcohol. And I think we've seen some positive uh, signs um, just today in terms of the monitoring and evaluating Scotland's alcohol strategy. I think that the fact that um, alcohol sales have reduced is, is very encouraging and hopefully that is a really important signal that minimum unit pricing is already having effect. But we already know that that alcohol-related deaths in Scotland are higher than other parts of the UK. So I know that no one in this chamber would be complacent, but I think the fact that there is so much support across the chamber, I think 70 MSPs and 37 organisations um, signed up to the pledge that alcohol marketing has no place in childhood and that all children should play, learn and socialise in places that are healthy and safe, protected from exposure to alcohol advertising and sponsorships. I think we're in a really good place to work towards that. Um, if I could um, pay tribute to uh, a former colleague from these benches, uh, Dr Richard Simpson, who did a lot of work on this in the last parliamentary term and continues to, to advocate and sometimes will, will tweet me or even DM me to keep me uh, uh, on the right track or suggest things that I might want to ask uh, Spice or, or ministers about. So I think we are lucky that, that there are very passionate MSPs in this chamber who want to continue to, to make progress. Um, if I can plug an event that I'm hosting uh, in Parliament on the 19th of September, that's a Thursday at one o'clock, and I'm sure 
many of you will attend, but um, myself and Joe Fitzpatrick, the Public Health Minister, will be welcoming young people to Parliament uh, from the, the Children's Parliament who are investigators, who've been speaking to their, their peers across schools in Edinburgh about the impact alcohol has on them and the, you know, the fact that when they get up in the morning, when they walk to school, when they walk through parks, when they're at the cinema, alcohol is, is everywhere. I also want to, in my final remarks, just pay tribute to some of the charities out there who pick up the pieces when children are affected by alcohol in hurtful ways, whether that's through uh, sometimes what we think about is experimental underage drinking, but actually when alcohol affects the family. So I want to pay tribute to Blameless, who are a charity based at Hamilton Aki's football stadium. And if she's not been able to get along so far, I'm sure that they would warmly welcome the, the minister um, along to, for a visit. In fact, the, the doors are open to, to anyone. Um, it is quite difficult for, for children who are affected by um, alcohol harm to get support. Um, there used to be groups like Alatine, but you know, it's not really accessible to young people anymore. I think the fact that we're having this debate and there are these forums is really important. But hopefully we can keep doing everything we can in Scotland to really raise the bar and make sure that all of our children and young people are protected from um, health harming products. Thank you. Rona Mackay, followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful to my colleague Kenneth Gibson for bringing this important debate to the Chamber. Presiding Officer, children and young people are inc incredibly receptive to marketing messages, whether direct or subliminal. We all remember what it was like when you reach a certain age and you think uh, you try to be a grown-up and, and at that stage drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes or any product that adults use seems attractive and cool. The reality is, as the helpful briefing from Alcohol Focus Scotland tells us, drinking during adolescence poses risks to long-term health and well-being, both by affecting important brain developmental processes and by establishing drinking patterns that can continue into adulthood. Alcohol consumption during adolescence may also have a heightened uh, effect on mental well-being. For example, it can be associated with higher risk of self-harm and suicide attempts. The fact is, adolescents are more susceptible to the intoxicating effects of alcohol due to their physical immaturity and low, lower tolerance levels. And we all know that the effects of, we all know the effects of alcohol can result in antisocial behaviour which blight communities. As Monica Lennon said, MSPs, the Children's Commissioner and many third sector organisations, including Children in Scotland, Children's First Bernardos, uh, have all supported the pledge that says alcohol marketing has no place in childhood and all children should play, learn and socialise in places that are healthy and safe, protected from exposure to alcohol advertising and sponsorship. But despite ever more stringent advertising restrictions, young people are exposed to the marketing of alcohol through the broadcast media, the internet and sports sponsorship. So at this stage, can I applaud Scottish women's football that Kenny uh, Kenneth Gibson mentioned, not only for having a fantastic team and taking us into the World Cup tournament, and I kind of wish them the best of luck tonight in their match against Argentina, but for, for refusing to accept alcohol-related sponsorship. That's a truly progressive, sensible approach, which I would dearly like men's football authorities to take on board. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government can lead the way in transforming this damaging culture. The commitment in the government's uh, alcohol prevention framework to consult on measures to restrict alcohol marketing to protect children and young people is hugely positive, as was our minimum unit pricing initiative introduced last year. Alcohol Focus Scotland is working with the Children's Parliament to explore ch children's thoughts and feelings about alcohol and how it impacts on their lives. Findings will, should be reported later this year. Uh, but children and young people must have a say in any initiative which pr promotes their health and well-being. But of course we know it's not just alcohol marketing that poses a danger to young people. It's junk food, high in fats and sugar, it's body enhancing products, slimming pills, influential video games and much more all designed to target a young demographic who are likely to be influenced. Successful marketing relies on targeting the audience, finding out what products have most appealed to a certain demographic. So I'm, I'm pleased that the advertising authorities are more, more responsible now and aware when promoting products which appeal to young people. And we have made um, some strides in that area and I hope it continues. But can I conclude by saying a final plea to retailers, please 
do more to keep harmful products away from our young people, our future generation. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Brian Whittle. Hey, thank you, Deputy Presenting Officer. And can I congratulate Kenny Gibson for securing time in this chamber? I know we're late in the, in the day here, but uh, I, for one, I'm, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to speak on something that, uh, like him, I'm very passionate, uh, passionate about. Because we're, we're talking about in a background of an exponential explosion in both ever more sophisticated marketing tactics and access to products that are eminently harmful to our children and young people. I know the motion specifically focuses on uh, alcohol consumption, but we could quite easily speak about excess consumption of high sugar food and drink, drink products or high levels of caffeine in drinks or fast food, processed food, or, or perhaps we could even include the overconsumption of video games and social media. Controversial. Uh, however, since we are focusing on alcohol, we should uh, applaud, as we have done already, the Scottish women's football for their stance against alcohol advertising. The argument against this, of course, is that it will be difficult to replace uh, this revenue in the associated sports. However, I'm sure Kenny Gibson, like me, is, uh, is of the era where the likes of motorsport and snooker were heavily sponsored by tobacco companies. I'm remembering the, the very famous JPS Lotus team, for example. They made exactly the same arguments back then uh, when legislation banned that kind of advertising. However, as we know, the sky has not fallen in in those sports and they have gone on from strength to strength. In fact, Formula One is one of the world's most cash-rich sports these days. And I would suggest that sport is entirely the wrong environment to, to promote such products because their consumption has exactly the opposite to the positive effect that sport can bring. Perhaps the stance that the Scottish women's football team has taken will show the way for other sports when they are considering this kind of sponsorship. I think in our drive to tackle many of the impacts of consumption of health-harming products, we have to acknowledge that there are many factors of which this parliament could affect. For example, we know that premises where alcohol can be purchased are disproportionately prolific in the least deprived areas. In fact, some 40% higher in some cases. So how this place and local authorities agree licensing of such premises gives politicians the ability to influence access to such brands and their associated marketing. Furthermore, we also need to look at the home environment and how children and young people are exposed to alcohol there. I, I met with Alcohol Scotland a couple of weeks ago who told me that they had been speaking to children of parents who have alcohol issues and when asked what they would want, the reply most frequently given was that the children wish their parents would abstain from drinking until the children had gone to bed. Now that should raise many flags with us. I think these children are basically looking for parental attention that I think most take for granted. They are losing out on opportunities to have access to activities both indoors and out in a family and community environment. These behaviours are learned, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, so we do need to consider how we can break that destructive cycle. I will give way. Monica Lennon. I'm grateful to Brian Whittle for giving way. Um, it's just to put some figures on it. Um, it's estimated that around 51,000 children, young people um, are living in a, in a household where alcohol harm is an issue. So we're not just talking about a few children, we're talking about, we could fill Hamden, Hamden Stadium actually. So does Brian Whittle agree with me that that is a particular area of focus that the government should be looking at how we support these young people and reduce stigma so that they can get help? Brian Whittle. Okay, thank you, Monica, for, for that intervention. And yes, I, I do agree with that. And I think, you know, that, that I'm, I'm going on to say some of the ways in which we can tackle this because when we're talking about uh, uh, things like deprivation, when we're talking about poverty, when we're talking about, you know, food poverty, etc., this has an impact on that. And, and the, the uh, parental, um, any kind of parental alcohol or drug abuse has an impact on that. So it is, it is a very, very important thing that we need to deal with. And I think. My final point, therefore, in, in, is the other side of this debate. It's how we encourage better choices and behaviours. I think limiting the marketing of health-harming products to our children and young people is, of course, commendable. However, are we doing all we can to market and promote health-enhancing uh, behaviours? And I would suggest there's a lot more we can do to make such opportunities more accessible and affordable, irrespective of background or personal circumstance. And adopting this kind of approach, this parliament could really grasp the preventative health agenda and deliver policies that catch uh, our poor health mm -hmm. outcomes further upstream, not only offering a better budget spend, but more importantly, far better long-term health outcomes. 
how we help to build our communities and, and, and support to our communities is extremely important in this challenge and supporting the third sector will be key, uh, giving communities the opportunity to play, to take part in sports and physical activities, to art, drama and music will have a significant impact in tackling the issues we are discussing now, Deputy I will finish now, Deputy President. Officer. There's much more I would love to say in this particular, that I think it's an important debate. And once again, thank Kenny Gibson for giving us the opportunity. I now call Claire Hockey to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, President Officer. And I'm pleased to close for the Government this evening. I commend Kenneth Gibson for bringing this motion forward and highlighting the importance of protecting our young people from alcohol advertising. And I would also like to add my thanks to the cross-party group for its important work. I want to begin by setting out the distinct challenges we face in Scotland. Since the 1980s, we have seen substantially increased alcohol consumption and consequently high levels of alcohol-related harm. On average, every adult in Scotland drinks around one-third more than the lower risk guidelines of 14 units per week. This is a range of serious consequences. There are on average 22 alcohol-specific deaths every week in Scotland and 683 hospital admissions. And behind every one of these statistics is a person, a family and a community. This was the motivation behind our 2009 alcohol framework, which has been successful in taking steps towards a healthier relationship with alcohol. We have banned irresponsible promotions of alcohol, lowered the drink drive limit and implemented our national alcohol brief intervention programme. And we have taken significant steps over the last decade. Our refreshed alcohol framework published last year builds on a decade of progress and sets out 20 further actions to prevent harm. Our approach is rooted in the best international evidence. At the heart of our new framework are the World Health Organization recommendations to tackle affordability, availability and attractiveness of alcohol. On affordability, we've taken bold action, and I'm proud to serve in the government which implemented our world-leading minimum unit pricing policy in May last year. As members know, the annual Monitoring and Evaluating Scotland's Alcohol Strategy report was published today, and this includes alcohol sales data for 2018, with eight months of post-minimum unit pricing sales. The volume of pure alcohol sold per adult in Scotland fell by around 3% from 2017 to 2018. This is the lowest level for 25 years. These are very promising signs. I want to take... Yes, I'll take the intervention. Brian Whittle. Yeah, can I thank you, Minister, very much for taking intervention. Within, within those figures, are we able to look at the impact that the minimum unit pricing has had on... Uh, deprivation and, and, uh, uh, and, and rather than just the average. So I think it's very important we look behind the figures. Are we able to do that? Claire Hockey. Um, I'm, I'm not clear if we are able to do that. Certainly from my understanding through hearing the Chief Medical Officer talk about this this morning, these are the, the very first of these, these uh, figures. So we're certainly going to have to compare data year on year. And I am pretty sure that there are more figures coming out in September. If that's incorrect, I'll let the member know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be aware, obviously, I'm covering for, uh, for the public minister for, uh, for uh, the Minister for Public Health. Um, I now want to turn to the attractiveness of alcohol. And like other members, I'm shocked by the sheer volume of alcohol marketing that children experience. The University of Stirling survey referenced in the motion found half of young people surveyed had seen at least 32 instances of alcohol marketing within a month. That's at least one each day, and that simply is too high. Presiding officer, it's clear that the current self-regulatory system for advertising is not providing adequate protection. Many of our European neighbours already have a stronger approach. Ireland will introduce mandatory restrictions from November this year. Our new alcohol framework contains two significant actions on alcohol marketing. To press the UK government to restrict television and cinema advertising of alcohol and to consult on a range of measures including mandatory restrictions on alcohol marketing within our devolved powers. We know that children still spend large amounts of time watching television with alcohol adverts aired prior to 9pm. And regrettably, powers over TV advertising are out with the control of this parliament. If Westminster remains unwilling to act, we will press for the relevant powers to be devolved. We can, however, take action on other forms of advertising within our devolved powers. 
When children and young people travel around their local areas, they're exposed to alcohol adverts on billboards, buses, bus shelters and digital screens. The University of Stirling research demonstrates that a quarter of young people see alcohol billboards on a weekly basis. And we also recognise that the marketing landscape has changed substantially with increasing prevalence of the internet and social media usage. Digital marketing often utilises new, more innovative methods. Our young people are particularly exposed as they spend more time online and are more likely to be active on social media. Young people grow up in a digital world and face a new set of pressures and I've seen the effects that this can have in my own portfolio. We know that social media can have negative impact on young people's emotional well-being and that there are connections to other things such as body image and disrupted sleep. I recently announced that we will co-produce advice on what healthy social media use looks like and it will be created by children and young people for children and young people. And we're providing funding of £90,000 to make this happen. And I'm delighted that the successful applicants were the Scottish Youth Parliament and the Children's Parliament. In developing our proposals on alcohol marketing restrictions, we are similarly committed to co-designing with children and young people. Policy to protect young people should be developed with them, not imposed upon them. Turning to alcohol sponsorship of events, I join other members in applauding Scottish women's football as an exemplar here, having pledged not to accept alcohol sponsorship. Marketing is a diverse area with many views and impacts to consider, and we will engage with all interested stakeholders and take their views into account. I'm very encouraged by cons the consensus in the Chamber this evening on protecting our children and young people from alcohol advertising. I know all the party leaders have signed the Alcohol Focus Scotland's Pledge for an Alcohol-Free Childhood. The Minister for Public Health will welcome further discussions with members as our pro proposals are being developed. Thank you. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed. Well done, everybody. <laughs>